Chris, welcome to our podcast and presentation for today. This is Amazing Accounting Add-ons for Your Firm Part 2. This is the second part of a presentation that we started a couple weeks back looking at awesome accounting tools that you can add to your existing accounting practice. The accounting system for a lot of organizations is the fundamental nature of reporting for their companies. It's where we do everything from setting up vendors to paying our employees to running reports to ultimately making decisions for our companies. And there's a lot of things that we can be doing with our accounting system above and beyond just general ledger stuff or accounts payable stuff or uh, accounts receivable. It can be the basis of a lot of different things that we do. And in this series, what we are looking at, we're looking at some of these awesome tools and the features and functions that can come along with it. Now, in the second part of today's class, we are going to pick up our discussion where we left off last time, looking at the vision of what accounting systems could look like in the future in terms of the integration and bringing together different features and functions under one roof. Now, the way that we're going to do this is through digital plumbing tools, uh, integration as a service tool, such as Zapier, Power Automate, and others, as an easy and uh, effective way of being able to pull information together. Now, long-term goal, we'll be able to extend the underlying capabilities through deep integration, but guess what? We can get started today utilizing some of these components. So in today's class, we're going to go ahead and look at a couple of different methods and, and technologies that are capable. Uh, I'm going to get you familiar with, for example, some really important terms like a REST API or a software development kit. Then we're going to go ahead and take a look at some specific functionalities that I think deserve an add-on for your accounting package, such as inventory, warehousing, and manufacturing. Uh, there are a handful of great tools that can extend the underlying capabilities of the inventory controls uh, to give you some of the more complex features and functions if you've got more complex inventory requirements. We'll take a look at e-commerce, a topic that is near and dear to my heart, where I have spent a majority of my career building e-commerce tools to help people sell online. We'll take a look at some manufacturing tools as well and add-ons. We'll take a look at some construction and job costing, document management, expense reporting. We'll talk a little bit about Expensify, my favorite employee expense reimbursement tracking and reporting tool. And we'll finish with a discussion of what you can do with accounts payable and what that potentially could look like for your organization in terms of using um, you know, a tool to essentially manage the payables for your company. All this and more in terms of our discussion and for our presentation for today. Now, today's recording from a state conference that I did before, um, so I hope you enjoy. Before we get started with that, though, I do want to remind you that our podcast is eligible for CBE credit. You can watch the content for free on YouTube or Facebook, and if you like it and you'd like some credits so you can keep your license, guess what? You can get those credits from CP Today and K2. It's super simple. After watching or listening, head on over to cpetoday.com. Use course code AAO2. You'll take a quick five question quiz. It'll take you two seconds to complete and out pops out your certificate for completion. You'll be well on your way for maintaining your license. It's an easy, fast, effective way to maintain your licensing. And besides podcasts, we've got a whole wealth of other courses and subject matters that you might find interesting for staying on top of your education and being the best professional you possibly uh, can be. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our presentation for today. I will join you at the conclusion of our course um, material and we'll do a couple of review questions and then get you going on your day. So best wishes and enjoy our presentation. Now, the vision that we are going for, essentially, in terms of building this is integrating all these different types of apps together, mobile apps, accounting apps, customer service relationship apps, data tools, point of sale, invoicing, AP, so on and so forth. Ideally, we want all of these different things to be able to work and function and tie back together and be able to share data easily with each other. Okay, That's actually quite difficult to, uh, to do. Okay. Now, some integrations might be scheduled, some integrations might be periodic, some might be done on demand, others might be done at a closing process or when an account is created, some occur in real place, some might require manual effort. Honestly, having a holistic systems-based view of this can be quite effective. Now, we have a number of tools that can help support this, either native integration with 
into it, for example, like I was showing you a minute ago, or it could be through some sort of external tool like Zapier, where Zapier is doing the heavy lifting, where it's seeing something occur, for example, in QuickBooks or Xero, and then choosing to send a notification to these different apps and sharing that data. Uh, tools like Xero aren't perfect, but man, do they get us a heck of a lot closer to our end goal. Now, let's talk through a couple of these of these technologies that can make this a lot easier for us. And one of the oldest technologies that are out there are going to be ODBC. And ODBC stands for Open Database Connectivity. And it is a standard that was established in the early 90s for interoperability between databases. And it's a standard middleware component that allows people to be able to pull data from one system and push it to another. Now, ODBC is not my first choice in any project, but I'll tell you what, it's a tried and true workhorse that in under other circumstances, if I can't get access to the data, I know as long as it's using a uh, standard SQL database, I can get that data in and out of it. And ODBC aimed to kind of make databases independent of each other and just allow data to be pushed in full. And it kind of simplifies a lot of integration. The biggest drawback of ODBC is its legacy. It's old, it is not fast, and there's other limitations. There's typically a lot of overhead that goes with it. There are better, more contemporary standards. But again, unless you got something uh, else, this is an okay format, uh, if nothing else will uh, be available. So ODBC, for example, allows us to push and pull data from different places. So we could pull data from Power BI, Excel, Access, Crystal Reports, Transaction Pro, and push it out to other systems. Or we could push and pull data from Oracle or from MySQL or MS SQL and be able to uh, push that into uh, other solutions as needed. So pretty much most applications will have some ODBC component of it. You just need to find the right driver for it. Most general ledger packages and accounting solutions will be ODBC compliant. And pretty much every um, database will support this particular technology. Let me show you something kind of cool, which I really, really like. And I will point it out to you. Okay. All righty, let's go ahead and bring this up. There is a really cool company called CData, okay? Uh, if anybody here's worked with CData or uses this in their organization, please shoot a comment to me. Let me know what you're thinking and, and how it works for you. Now, CData is a tool that you can just go to, cdata.com, um, and they create drivers for virtually all applications. And it allows you to be able to pull data out of an application and be able to push it and pull it to other places as needed. So I'll just click over here to the connectors and let's just go ahead and take a look at some of the different tools that you can work with using C data. So using C data, I could push and pull data from QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Online. We could push and pull data from Oracle, from SAP, from MySQL, from... Um, Act, from Active Directory, from Avatax, so on and so forth. These are all the different tools that you can essentially use with CData products. And it allows you to be able to grab this data and pull it directly into Excel or pull it directly into Power BI or pull it into whatever tool you might want to uh, use. So as an example here, let's go ahead and search for QuickBooks Online. Oops, that is not what I wanted to click on. Let's try that one more time. Come on, there we go. You can see they've got a number of QuickBooks solutions, QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks uh, Enterprise, or QuickBooks Point of Sale. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the QuickBooks Online product, okay? This will allow us to connect to QuickBooks Online and we can use bi-directional data drivers, meaning we can pull that data out and we can also write that data back. This allows us, for example, to pull data into business intelligence, data visualization tools. Uh, we can use what's called ETL, extract, transform, load, and replicate that data doing really comprehensive data backup. And we can also write our own workflow and automation tools. 
And this is a great way that you can essentially pull your data out of QuickBooks and be able to use it for other purposes. Now they support a wide range of solutions, you know, besides just standard QuickBooks stuff, they've got a number of accounting packages that support this, you know, Dynamics Great Plains, for example, Nav, uh, FreshBooks, Sage, all the different Sage products you could potentially use as well as Zero or as even SAP Concur, which is an expense management uh, solution. And so if you're using Great Plains as an example here, well, this will allow you to be able to pull your data out of Great Plains and then ultimately push it to some other tool if you so desire. And so ODBC, again, it's not my first choice. There are plenty of other solutions that I think work better, but it is a pretty useful tool nonetheless. Now we can also use what are called APIs. API stands for application programming interface. And this is where I spend a lot of my time. Uh, companies like Intuit or Sage or Microsoft, they will publish an API that will allow us to do something. It's a set of routines, protocols, and interfaces for building our own software applications. And it allows us to be able to push and pull data to and from. We can pull and from, push and sorry, push and pull data from accounting to payroll, payroll to CRM, uh, so on and so forth. And they use a variety of different protocols, uh, but the most common of which is what's called REST, a representational state transfer. And REST allows us to build whatever type of solution that we might want to use. Now, doing this, we can build other software and we can improve and make it do other things. Let me go ahead and show you an example here from one of my absolute favorite tools, which is Clockify, okay? If you're looking for an absolute awesome time tracking application, Clockify, in my opinion, is the absolute best. It's free for all size organizations. You can track time. It's excellent for projects. Uh, and that's what our organization uses, for example, to track our time, both in terms of payroll as well as billable time for projects. And it's free. I mean, no conditions, F-R-E-E. -E. They do have some premium tools that you can choose to add on to their application. And I will tell you, it is well worth it. This is my favorite timekeeping solution for professional service firms. Uh, you wouldn't use this for a construction company or a medical office, but you know what? If you're an accounting office, this is a great solution if you're looking to track time to pay your people or bill your clients. Well, they have a Clockify API, okay? Using this, we can push and pull data to and from Clockify. And I use the heck out of this to build all the different things that I might want to use inside of my company. So I can, for example, come down here to the user API. And this user API will tell me essentially what and how to get data from this uh, company. So let's say, for example, I want to add a user. It will give me the programming examples and the things that I could do to be able to get and pull push and pull information. Uh, let's say, for example, I wanted to go and I wanted to go and get uh, a list of our current projects and the clients in those particular projects. Well, there is a API call that I can do. This one right here, for example, will give me a list of all clients in my particular company. And so if I wanted to create a client, I could do that very easily. Now, this might look a little bit Greek to you, but I can tell you that this is a very easy application to be able to add to your organizational's workflow. And lots of companies will have APIs depending on what you're looking to do. Uh, Intuit is no different than this. If you look, there is a Intuit API for QuickBooks or a Zero API for adding and pulling data from uh, Zero. And I would tell you, if you're picking different solutions, for example, uh, you're going to want to ask, hey, do you have an API? Can I push and pull the data from you? And just knowing that this is possible gives you the ability to be able to build other applications on top of that as well. So when I'm looking at solutions for our organization, I can tell you that choosing an API is something that is really, really important to me. And we will not pick a solution that does not have an API to be able to operate with. Okay, question came in here. One or more of my clients had a vendor who said they could integrate their point of sale specialty program with QuickBooks Online advanced back in November. They're saying they're still working on it as of Friday. Um, you know, I'm personally a big fan of under promise and over deliver. And I'm also a big fan. Again, uh, an ounce of planning is worth a pound of frustration. I don't take engagements. I know I can't slam dunk. Uh, and it's really frustrating when a vendor, for example, will promise something and they haven't actually built that solution or work with that product. And I mean, a very cursory review 
will typically tell you whether or not something is possible. And that could be very frustrating to the client and to the vendor as well. So I, I can appreciate your client's position. Um, whether or not that ends up happening, I don't know. You know, so um, I could tell you that usually you can tell these things pretty quickly up front. If I have a client and I work on client projects all the time and they're like, oh, we want to use, you know, QuickBooks online. We want to use, let's say, um, Aloha for our point of sale system and we want to use ADP for payroll and we want our people to be able to clock in on Aloha. We want to be able to track the sales in Aloha and send the payroll information to ADP, so on and so forth. Well, I could very quickly be able to tell you whether or not that's going to work. And the reason being is because these developer documentations are usually, and they should be quite public. And so by doing this, what we can typically come up with, give me one second here. I'll show you a quick example of how we work. One second. I actually just put this together like two days ago. Okay. Don't know if I'll actually be able to demonstrate this. Okay. Actually, okay. Give me one second. I think I can. Here is an example of what this might look like. Okay. So I will typically kind of go through and I want to holistically understand what the intention of what the company is doing and all the different systems that they might be using. And by doing this, it's going to give the client an understanding essentially of what and how uh, they can expect with, their spe with respect to the different systems that they have. And it's better for me uh, because ultimately I want to not take an engagement I know I can't win, you know, and, and provide really kind of good value uh, to the organization. Sorry, give me one second here. I just want to make one quick change. And then I will show you as an example. There we go. All righty. Just needed to block out the client's name. Okay. Oh, nope. And we will typically put together a integration package, uh, essentially helping them understand what and how these different functions will, will work. So here's an example of what this might look like. Uh, in this particular example, you know, we have a variety of different systems, for example, website, portal, reporting, marketing, manufacturing, so on and so forth. There's a lot of stuff that's going on here in terms of understanding where and how these different functions might be and where and how we're going to push and pull different systems. Uh, in this particular example, there are nine systems that we're looking to integrate, whether they be, for example, their front end website, a secure portal for exchanging information, a portal for pulling and designing reports or authentication. There could be a lot of pieces that are coming and going inside of this. And it's really important you do your due diligence ahead of time to understand how these pieces are going to come together because frankly, it could be incredibly expensive if you don't understand what you're doing and how you're doing it. Um, and I generally, again, like to under promise and over deliver, you know, but this is the type of diagram that I would expect to see from a vendor if they're talking about doing integration, I want to know how it's going to work, the protocols you're going to be using, maybe, maybe even all the way down to example API calls that you might choose to want to use. But a diagram like this at a 40,000 foot perspective will give you the insight necessary to be able to make decisions about what products and how the data would push and pull from the systems. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight in terms of what you should be doing as you're starting to plan some of these other protocols and some of these other integration solutions for a company. Let me know if you have any other questions on that. So here's another example. This is called IPaaS, okay? Integration Platform as a Service. Now, Integration Platform as a Service is a way that we can push and pull data without having to write any code. Um, these are really kind of cool because they're point and click with respect to, you know, something happens, do something over here. There's a number of these different solutions that are out there. Zapier is probably, in my opinion, the originator of this marketplace. And in my opinion, probably has the best overall solution. 
Uh, another really kind of cool solution to look at would be a solution called Power Automate. The one thing I will point out here is that with um, these tools, they're not free in the sense of like there's an uh, there's an overhead cost that you should be considering here uh, because it can, for example, um, get expensive. In my opinion, these are good crutch tools. They're good tools to use kind of like initially with respect to um, getting configured and set up. Um, but ultimately, if you're going to plan on, on doing integration long term, in my opinion, you know, it's always better to have control over that and to build your own integration. But if you're looking just to experience, experiment, try different things out, these tools are fantastic to work with. Um, if I were to kind of give you one to consider working with, would be again that Zapier or Power Automate. In my opinion, they're probably the most mature and the most automated and have the most features. You can check out zapier.com. It allows you to connect the different things together. And in a real kind of high level, it's trigger in action. So as an example here, I get an email in Gmail. If maybe it has an attachment, if so, copy that attachment over to Dropbox. It does this without the user having to do anything. And then the next action might be to send an alert on Teams or Slack about that particular new Dropbox file. So I think that's kind of useful, you know, in terms of being able to kind of keep that consistent workflow and it'll work autonomously to the user in the sense that I don't personally have to uh, do anything. I just design the workflow and it'll just occur. Uh, Zapier works with over 2000 different apps. And I mean, it is really kind of incredible, the breadth and extent, actually, sorry, I misspoke 3000 different apps that it works with. And you could put in the different tools and services, for example, let's say it is QuickBooks or Xero. Well, you could see, for example, the different products and tools that they support and what you can do with it and the different integration methods that it supports. So I'll give you some examples here of different things, you know, create a QuickBooks customer from a Stripe credit card charge, create a QuickBooks sales receipt for a WooCommerce order, so on and so forth. All right, so we've got about a half hour left. What I want to do is I want to talk about some of the major different types of add-ons. Now that I've given you a good high-level objective overview about how different add-ons work and some of the design methodology, which in my opinion is more important so you understand how these things work, and we can go through some of the specific add-ons that are out there. And if you've got ones or a particular category that you're interested in, like, Hey, Steve, what about point of sale? What about selling stuff online? Or what about job costing or uh, working in professional services? Just give me a shout, let me know. And I'm happy to address, but I'm going to just try to talk about some of the ones that I have most experience with and some of the comments that go with it. So I will tell you, in my opinion, the biggest headache of any accounting system is inventory management. Um, and cloud-based accounting solutions are no exception to this. In my opinion, every one of them, QuickBooks Online Zero, their inventory system, in my opinion, is absolute garbage. You know, as, apart from really, really, really basic stuff. If you're managing 10 SKUs in QuickBooks Online, great. You won't have any problems. Put in your cost info. You can do your cost of goods sales. You can judge your inventory levels, make adjustments. But if you're dealing with serious inventory, like hundreds of SKUs or maybe potentially thousands of SKUs, you're absolutely going to need a dedicated inventory system. Uh, one of the solutions that I've worked on for the last couple of years is an inventory solution for um, one of my clients. And they have thousands of SKU numbers for all the different types of products. They sell a lot of really tiny little things and each tiny little thing is its own particular SKU. Well, I tell you, if we put that data into QuickBooks Online, it would cry. Even in, in desktop, it would cry. It's not designed to have that level of sophistication. I don't care what Intuit tells you, even their enterprise product not designed for that sophistication, it will not work really effectively. So an inventory add-on module will be essential if you're managing any sort of complex inventory, both in terms of product design, as well as in terms of um, quantity as well. So here's some major ones, you know, we've got SOS, Locate, Fishbowl is probably the most well-known, uh, as well as Zoho Inventory and Unleash. And this kind of gives you a sense what tools that these particular products are used in. Uh, I would say probably the most ubiquitous would be this Fishbowl inventory system working across both the QuickBooks and Zero environments. 
Okay. Now, some things to consider when you're choosing your inventory solution. Uh, I would tell you your costing method, you know, is it FIFO, LIFO, weighted average, average cost, something like that, you know, is going to make a big input because not every inventory system accounts for inventory in the same, same way. I would say that most of them are probably weighted average in terms of, uh, how they determine like your costing. Um, and then I would say the other one would be most often LIFO. I think QuickBooks and Zero mostly support those if I remember off the top of my head. Uh, we also have to think through manufacturing, you know, for making things, you know, work in progress, uh, raw materials, tracking that kind of stuff is important to know as well as, you know, are we making stuff to order? Or are we making stuff and putting it into stock? Ideally, we want something that would manage that process from end to end, you know, so if it goes into a finished goods account versus getting shipped out the door and sent to the customer. Uh, we want to think through things like picking, packing, and shipping and the variety of charges that go along with that. Managing stock in multiple locations, as well as back orders and back stock for that, and multiple places that those items could ship from. Uh, other more sophisticated things that we might want would be things like, for example, barcode support. Uh, for the client that I manage or that I mentioned earlier, where we've been working on their inventory system for the last couple of years, uh, everything's barcoded. Why? Because it would be horrific if it wasn't uh, having something like a field service unit where you can go out and scan these things makes it a heck of a lot easier. What kind of integration does it have to the accounting system? Is it real time or batch or maybe, maybe it's just straight up journal entry. Um, depending on the sophistication and what, what you need, you might want real time. You know, if for example, that data is being pushed to a website where customers can see in real time, what stock is available, that might be really useful and effective uh, to have. However, if you don't need that level of sophistication, it will definitely add complexity to your organization that might not be required. So in my opinion, it's really kind of up to the specific implementation to determine if that kind of real time nature is required, or if um, just kind of having a periodic reconciliation, a periodic journal entry is going to be sufficient. Uh, likewise, any type of solution I'm looking at, I want to make sure it has an API application programming interface or an SDK, a software development kit, so that if we do need to make modifications in the future, we at least have that option available to us. Now, there are a variety of these different tools that you can consider. There's SOS inventory. Just be aware it only works with QuickBooks Online. It is not a free tool and starts at $39.95 a month for two users, and then you can add additional users as well. However, just because it's got an introductory price does not mean that'll be the price you end up paying. Often, most folks will end up at that $80 price as well. We have the Locate package. You know, it works with a lot of different things, including QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Enterprise, Zero, and others. So that is definitely an option uh, to consider. Uh, it does... It is offered in a SaaS-based environment. It's also got an API to allow the customers to be able to create their own workflow and create their own uh, tools. Also integrates with Zapier to be able to push and pull data in your particular uh, use case. So you get a lot of flexibility with respect to how that would function. Okay, the one that I probably recommend the most would be Fishbowl. You know, Fishbowl is definitely... Um, I would say the longest standing inventory system independent of the accounting package itself. In my opinion, it's definitely the most mature and it offers a number of integration points to popular accounting solutions in the QuickBooks space, Rec Recon, as well as the Zero space. It also offers a number of integration tools, like for example, to Amazon or eBay, if you're choosing to sell your products in there, uh, where an order can take place in Amazon, for example, it'll deduct it from Fishbowl and then ultimately push that sale over to your accounting solution. It also has the best international support, accounting for things like VAT or GST. However, it is not cheap. Pricing starts at about 4,300 bucks, goes up from there. So if you have any sort of complexity with respect to your inventory system, I would definitely consider some tool to uh, manage that inventory for you. Okay. Another tool that you might need would be something to buy and sell online. And if you're not buying and selling online at this point in time, in my opinion, that is a missed opportunity for virtually all organizations. And there are a number of different tools that you can choose to use. 
some of which are listed right here. And again, I've got those integration uh, methods. And this is probably out of all the things that we're gonna list here, probably the thing I have the most expertise in because this is where I spend a lot of my time. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and just throw this out here, not my, um, not for my own personal benefit, but just kind of saying that, uh, don't do this. I mean, don't don't try to integrate your e-commerce tool with your accounting solution. From experience, it will be a bigger headache than it is worth. Just journal it. It'll be a heck of a lot easier. But let's, for the sake of the presentation, just kind of walk through some of these specific uh, components. So buying and selling online is super useful and effective. And obviously that is how most of us, especially in the COVID and post-COVID world, choose to uh, interact and uh, purchase things, you know, and, and work in this particular way as well now. And a lot of these tools, for example, will have some sort of integration to platforms uh, where you can, you know, be able to have a sell occur in one system and then record it in your financial system as well. And they will also maybe integrate with other tools like marketing services, merchant services, so on and so forth. And when you're looking for e-commerce tools, I would definitely tell you robustness is better than not. And you're going to want to find tools, for example, that allow you to manage those sales effectively, allow people to pay with whatever payment method they want, whether it be a credit card or a check, or maybe even cryptocurrency if need be, as well as work in a variety of verticals. Okay. A lot of different tools that are out there. All of these tools that are listed, though, um, that I've got listed here, they all have their own set of limitations that will pop up and they're fine as long as you meet the very narrow specification of what they are designed to do. Um, and there's a couple of different categories of things that you might have. You know, for example, we have traditional products, which are sold like a shirt or a hat. We also have services, which are like consulting or, you know, getting your teeth cleaned or visiting a doctor. Uh, and then we also have events, which have a date and time you know, associated with it. It might be like a webinar, like we're in it today. Be aware, none of these solutions do all of those things concurrently. And you're going to end up needing multiple things in order to be able to cover if you have more than one category of products that are listed. And they're good for what they're intended to do. But I will point out all of these tools for the most part are designed to sell limited products. If you have a lot of, of complexity with respect to your products, um, you're probably going to need multiple solutions in order to be able to pull them together. Now, the ones that I probably feel the best about would be, for example, the Shopify. Uh, Shopify is one of the simpler offerings. It does a really good job if you've got, for example, a product-oriented company or a limited service-oriented company. Uh, it's safe. It's secure. It's offered a lot. Uh, a lot of features and functions around the marketing side of this that I think would be really helpful and useful for a lot of different people. They've also got a full API so you can push and pull data and it's reasonably uh, priced in order to be able to get uh, started at $29 uh, per month. So that's a solution. And if you have zero coding or zero technical expertise, this is probably the overall best solution for you to consider. Uh, another solution that you might want to consider would be WooCommerce. Okay. Uh, WooCommerce is a plugin actually for another solution called WordPress. WordPress is a publicly available e website management solution. And with WordPress, you could build whatever type of website you want you know, and there's a lot of really kind of cool things about it. And with respect to WordPress, you could use this to display information about your company, your staff, your products, so on and so forth. And you could also extend WordPress to do other things for you. Let's go ahead and take a look. So if you go to wordpress.org, you can go ahead and check this out. And in fact, you can come over here to get WordPress. You can download this and you can self host it if you'd like. And they've also got a number of providers that'll host it for you. Uh, but it's free. The base application itself is free and it's got a whole range of plugins and tools that you could choose to use. And it integrates with a lot of stuff. If you come up here to WordPress and select plugins, you can actually browse a variety of different plugins they have available. So everything from managing your events to, I guess, having quizzes about cats uh, or whatever else you choose to do, you can. And if you come over here and you search for WooCommerce, okay, you'll find that this is an e-commerce solution that you can easily add to your WordPress site. So it's used by a lot of people. You can see it's installed in 5 million plus websites. 
it's decent in terms of what it does. And again, if you're selling limited products with limited sophistication, I don't think you'd have a bad time. And I've used this in a number of instances where it's just made sense, for example, for the client to use a more standard uh, e-commerce solution than to kind of build something custom. And I'm all about finding the best possible solution for the least amount of money. So this isn't, uh, this requires a little bit more sophistication than what you would get with Shopify, but by no means is it complex. And it looks pretty good for the most part. You could read all the different information about it, uh, kind of coming through this particular site. And they've also got some nice screenshots where you can see what that looks like. And it does all the things that you might want it to uh, do. You know, for example, like listing your products, or you can even do things like conditional products as, uh, you know, where, you know, you might want to choose a shirt, but then is it the red shirt, the yellow shirt? Is it the XL size, the double X, the medium? Uh, you can also use it to track inventory too, as well. So overall, a pretty good uh, solution that you can consider um, with respect to, you know, kind of getting online without a lot of uh, uh, um, without a lot of headache on your side as well. OK, so I would recommend checking out both of those. They are reasonably uh, pretty good solutions to try out. And the good news is if it doesn't work, you're not into it for a heck of a lot of money. Okay, let's talk a little bit about manufacturing, okay? So managing the manufacturing process from start to finish can be quite attractive to an organization. And there are a lot of choices with respect to how you might choose to manage that manufacturing process. And some things you might wanna consider, are you a process or assembly-based organization? Uh, are you trying to make stock to order or make stock to make stock, you know, are you putting it into finished goods and putting it in inventory or does somebody like configure it on your website and then, you know, click order and then you assemble it and ship it out to that person. Uh, do you need to manage things like lots and serial numbers, you know, which is increasingly important, for example, for product liability purposes. Other things you might want to consider, cloud-based versus on-premise, batch updates versus real time, what method of costing, uh, as well as how you calculate overhead. So because this is hard, you're probably going to, again, want to engage with somebody who is familiar with your organization. Um, and it might require something custom. It might require something out of the box, but it also might require uh, some additional sophistication in order to get that out of the box tool to work effectively uh, for you. Uh, there are tools and components that are designed for this, but I will point out that they are not for the unsophisticated user. So there are a couple of uh, tools. There's Activate, there's MIS Manufacturing, there's MRP Made Easy. Okay, they will sometimes work with cloud, sometimes work with on-premise, but certainly do your own due diligence and you can find a solution that would work uh, for you. Okay, so, but I would say out of all the things that are available here um, that manufacturing is probably one of the more complicated things that you'll come across. Okay, job costing and construction, you know, management accounting, essentially. This could be really difficult to separate from our purchasing and payroll and payables um, because of process inside the company. Um, some, for, some things, for example, like our payroll might be buried in other aspects of our system and that information might not be easily translatable or might not even exist in a way that we can use for getting good job costing. Uh, as an example, you know, let's say, for example, your people just clock in and clock out, but they're not tracking their time on a company by company basis. Well, that could be really difficult when you choose to go and allocate payroll to a particular client and understanding essentially how one client is and, and what the time related to that particular client might be. Uh, on a manufacturing side, it could certainly get more difficult as well uh, because again of that, uh, unless you're tracking at an individual level, that could be quite difficult to do. Uh, I would tell you the more data, the better. And the more data that that could be, um, the more that that data could be cut up and stored in its individual level, the better as well. So there are some key things that you might want to consider. I've got an ex some examples here, you know, whether you're dealing with custom orders, pre-configured stuff, how are you managing your expenses and are you marking up those expenses, how your payroll and systems are configured, is it batch or real time? 
But let me just go ahead and just switch back over and just kind of give you an example of what this might look like from a payroll side of this. So here is again, that Clockify program that I showed you a little bit ago. And again, one of my absolute favorite tools for managing time inside of an organization. This is an example of how we could do job costing uh, if we're trying to determine, let's say profitability on a client by client basis. You know, what's nice about this is that we can come in, we can specify, let's say I am uh, working on the Acme uh, engagement, Acme bookkeeping engagement compilation, not complication, compilation. There we go. Okay, now I can come on over here to our project side of this. Let me zoom in a little bit. And this would be where I would go ahead and I would choose, for example, what project and what client this applies to. And as long as I've got that level of sophistication and I know, for example, the client and I know, for example, the project, well, then I can choose to break this down in a more meaningful way. But if I'm not capturing that data all along the way, there's not a lot that I can do after the fact without significant manual effort to make that work. Now, this tool is, again, really good if you're trying to get insight on how to manage, you know, engagements and, and profitability based off of clients and profitability based off of employee. This is a really cool tool to check out. And again, check out the CP Today podcast uh, where I have done multiple uh, walkthroughs on that particular tool and how and where it will function. So something definitely to consider. OK, so. Let's say we want to get stuff to manage our professional services, okay? Time and resource scheduling, we should be thinking about. Uh, time and job tracking, automation of various things can be done from the accounting system, like, for example, kicking out our engagement letters. Uh, or, for example, integration with services like Outlook and make scheduling appointments with clients really, really easily. And then I could, for example, take that time and then easily apply it to the client so that I bill it appropriately. Um, there are a variety of tools that you might want to consider for managing your professional services. Um, my personal favorite out of this would be BQE Core. Uh, BQE makes some excellent professional service and time management products that are really kind of geared towards more sophisticated uh, office environments, larger accounting firms, uh, legal offices, and things like that as well. Okay. We might want, for example, tools to help manage documents inside of our organization, okay? And increasingly, CPA firms, as well as uh, more traditional-based organizations, might have um, a need to manage paper and be able to share paper with other folks. Um, and managing those documents effectively can be quite, quite important in terms of security and safety of the organization's data. So I would tell you with respect to document management, there are some specific features I would tell you to consider. A check-in and check-out procedure, okay? Check-in, check-out, meaning somebody could check out a document, update it, and if I were to go to try to work on that exact document, I would see that it is currently in use by Steve. Uh, and then I can check that document back in when I'm done with it. Uh, I love anything that does versioning. Versioning is super important because as documents change, and inevitably they will at some point, uh, what's nice about that is that I would be able to understand when that document changed and then be able to roll back to that particular document if and when there was an issue with that. And having that level of sophistication can be really important uh, as we start to look at uh, concurrency with people in terms of, you know, who has access and who can do what and when did those particular things occur um, inside of an organization. That version control from a security perspective, in my opinion, is quite useful and quite effective for managing risk inside of an organization. And I'm going to show you something real quick here in a minute where you can essentially get version control probably using the tools that you already have available to us. Uh, and also document management can also be a native component of workflow management and approval management inside of an organization. Uh, if we think of tools like bill.com, for example, that manages the AP process from start to finish, well, there's this whole workflow component that if certain expenses meet certain characteristics from particular vendors at certain dollar thresholds, well, it will automate the approval of that invoice without ever having to create paper going from one person to the other until that invoice 
invoices approved. So it might come to me if I did the original expense, it might go to my supervisor for them to approve, and it might ultimately get approved by a third person if it's a large invoice like the controller or CFO, um, but it's all part of a single workflow. Let me show you one real quick thing with Windows that you might find effective for managing documents inside of your organization. One of my favorite document management tools is SharePoint and Microsoft Teams. It works super effectively, okay? So if we open up OneDrive or SharePoint on our computers, you'll notice, for example, right here, there are a listing of different um, icons showing us what type of file there are. So we can see here that this file is stored on the web, this file is local on the computer, so on and so forth. But anything stored inside a share file on OneDrive is automatically version control. And when you update and put a new version in place there, that file will also be updated as well. If you right click on any file in OneDrive or in SharePoint, you'll notice if you come into the menu option here, there'll be an option that will show you the versions for that particular file. So we're going to go ahead and right click on this. We're going to see this version history and it will pop up. And if there was another version of this file, in this case, it's just a sample file from Microsoft, we would see version one, version two, version three. And at any point I can go ahead and I can roll back and open that particular version And Microsoft SharePoint and OneDrive will store them for a period of time designated by the organization. But I find having that measure of control to be quite effective for reducing risk in the company. If somebody made a mistake, or a boo-boo, we can go back to a prior version of that document without really kind of any massive issue overall. So other document management tools that you might want to consider, there's Neat, there's HubDocs, SmartVault, Auto Update, I'm sorry, Auto Entry, uh, as well as DocuExplorer as well. And these will natively integrate with your accounting solution. Okay, let's talk a little bit about expense and reporting and management. So I'm talking about managing either credit card that are handed off to your employees or uh, expense reports that are um, your employees are generating and then seeking reimbursement for. And uh, I think both of these solutions are, are you know, totally likely scenarios. At some point, your employees going to spend some money and they're going to want to get either paid back. Or if you're giving a uh, credit card to your employee, you need to account for those charges so that they get onto the income statement in the appropriate places. I could tell you from experience, the taxing agencies are becoming more and more aggressive around employee expenses, um, you know, because they want to know, is it actual like a legitimate business expense? Or was this the employee essentially uh, trying to you know, use a credit card for company purposes for their own personal uh, benefit, well, that would be actual compensation to the employee. So having good employee expense tracking, in my opinion, is quite necessary these days uh, in order to properly account for uh, that, uh, uh, those expenses. Now, I would tell you with any of these solutions, getting a good credit card feed for both corporate and personal cards is not optional. Uh, American Express, Visa, most of your major banks, for example, will support this as well as PayPal, Venmo, and others so that people can essentially track those transactions and will download those transactions directly to that uh, uh, credit card um, tracking system. And then the employee can classify, you know, hey, was this uh, uh, travel? Was this meals? Was this supplies? Whatever it ends up happening to be. They could tag, for example, when an expense is personal or corporate. They can also tag it to a particular project. Most of these solutions will have a mobile app where you can just snap a picture of the receipt and that particular receipt will um, have all the exact details that are required um, for proper expense tracking. Uh, they can also uh, have an approval workflow where the user can, for example, set up um, and maybe kick off this workflow where at the end of the period, the um, uh, it goes to their manager and then their manager, for example, has to approve it. And if their manager approves it, then the CFO might have to approve it. Very similar to what we saw uh, earlier with uh, Bill.com. And I was mentioning with respect to vendor payments, we can also do with respect to our payments for our employee expenses. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a lot of work. We can essentially just configure this and it'll continue to run. Uh, you can also do stuff like reimbursements where automatically pay it out to the employee. We can, for example, set this up to integrate with our variety of workflows as well as a variety of uh 
uh, accounting solutions where the data will just flow from the expense tracking solution all the way and including, you know, you, for example, have uh, a couple listed here, Expensify, there's Spring Ahead, there's Tally, there's Zoho. The only one I really don't like and I've consistently not liked it is SAP's Concur. And SAP bought Concur a couple of years ago. I didn't like it was when it was just Concur. I've always, I've just found it to be very kludgy, very cumbersome, very slow, very difficult to work with. Uh, the solution that I like the best, and it is one of my absolute favorite go-to solutions when uh, helping a client essentially get this particular process in play is Expensify. And in my opinion, Expensify just does a fantastic job for expense reimbursement. And I think it just overall is the easiest to use. Uh, their particular solution has a fantastic mobile app that is available both for iOS and Android. It offers a number of integrations uh, to a variety of different cards and banks. I would say probably has the most out of anybody. And so it can be great for expense management. It can be great for using bill pay. It can be great for managing your travel for your different companies. Um, and you could kind of read through on their Expensify site here, all the different integrations that it supports. And it supports both a variety of cloud-based solutions, but also on-premise solutions as well. Uh, so if you happen to be using QuickBooks Desktop, not a problem. It supports a number of practice management solutions, including from Walters Coors and Thomson Reuters. It also supports receipt integration from a variety of travel companies like Uber, Lyft, and more as well as taxing solutions and, and more. I just personally find it to be the overall uh, best out of the bunch. Let me just go ahead and quickly show you what one of their expense reports look like so you can kind of get a sense of, of how it functions. So here's a sample expense report. Okay, and I just think they just will look really, really good. So, um, You'll see here, this is a sample report for Acme Conference. We'll see the total listed here. We'll see a nice breakdown, almost in a general ledger format by category. So it'll tell us exactly where this should apply. And I want to point out, I can also export this to my accounting system as well. And then it'll give us a nice transactional history of where and how this report was modified. And then subsequent pages from here will also give us a nice breakdown, first of a thumbnail image of all the different receipts, and then a full resolution image of that particular receipt that was here. So I can see for this particular method, this was at uh, Ontario Airport. We can see it was for $18. Here's a copy of that receipt. You know, here was, for example, a uh, uh, train ticket, you know, so on and so forth. So overall, I, I find this to be the best out of the bunch when it comes to managing um, expense reimbursement. Now, it'll also do mileage too, which is pretty cool. And they've got this really kind of cool GPS trackment tracker that can uh, um, track you from place to place. So unfortunately, we're coming towards the end of our presentation here. And I do want to do one more that I think are useful, which is going to be on the accounts payable side of this. Cause I really feel that this is a, a, a topic that, um, is an issue for a lot of organizations and managing that AP process is in my opinion, probably the highest risk that an organization has. If we look at fraud, a lot of people tend to focus on the AR side and cash, but really there's more AP fraud than anything else. Okay, so there are a variety of tools, for example, to help manage our invoicing and management of the invoicing process as well. And there are a variety of bank feeds where we can essentially reconcile those transactions. Here's what was issued. Here's what was paid to ensure that it will uh, match up correctly. Uh, there are tools, for example, that will do invoice extraction. You know, essentially we submit the invoice electronically and they will pull the invoice number, the date, the time, the whatever off that particular invoice and automatically put it into the accounting system for us. Uh, so I think these particular solutions can be quite effective overall for helping manage that particular uh, risk for our organizations. A couple that I really like, I like the Avid Exchange program. It integrates with a lot of different solutions as well. I'm a big fan of the bill.com solution. I think this is a great solution to consider working with and Checkbook IO. A newcomer to this would also be Milio, M-E-L-I-O. Uh, just started using it a couple of months ago and I've had really good success with it as well. And it does free ACH and bill pay for your organization. So unfortunately, that does bring us to the end of our 
uh, presentation for today. Hopefully you have a pretty good understanding of the different tools that are available to you to help meet your business needs and integrate with your accounting solution. Not every solution is equal, but realize you do have a lot of choices and that you can pick something that will work for your organization both now and into the future. They Products vary in terms of completeness of vision. Some are quite limited. Some are growing. You can find things really kind of any level that might uh, that might work for your organization. You can easily uh, tie it into your accounting solution to allow that data to pass back and forth. All right, colleagues, welcome back to our presentation. I hope you enjoyed our recording of amazing accounting add-on tools. Let's go ahead and finish with some review questions and then we'll get you going for the day. Our first review question, iPaaS is considered to be, is it a tool that extracts data from another application and does nothing else? Is it a tool that extracts data from an application and writes it to an API? Or is it a tool that extracts data from another application and writes it to another application using an API? Correct answer here is going to be a tool that extracts data from another application and writes it to another application using an uh, API. Uh, integration platform as a service gives us the opportunity to be able to take data from one place, move data to another place, typically using an API or another method of authentication and integration. It's a great way of being able to do data sharing without a whole lot of fuss and muss on your side. Tools like Zapier, Power Automate, and others are a wonderful add-on tool that can be greatly used to provide integration when that otherwise would not be possible. I tend to use them mostly for prototyping and just seeing what's out there. Often from that point, once I know that it works and I validated it, I will then go ahead and create my own custom integration so I can get exactly the way I need it to be. All right, let's take a look at our second review question. What are some of the features to consider when looking for software to help with warehousing, data warehousing, that is? So uh, actually, no, sorry, just no normal warehousing for normal inventory. So if I were running a wholesaling business or maybe I'm a manufacturer with finished goods, what are some of the features and components uh, that I might want to consider when choosing software for my warehouse? Okay, barcode and handheld support. You betcha, that would make things so much easier. Maybe even RFID if our application is large enough that it warrants that kind of uh, sophistication. Accounting integration. Absolutely, I'd want to track work in progress, finish goods, as well as knowing my inventory points so that I know when I either to make more or buy more. Automatic recording of in-stock management. Absolutely, that would be a really good thing to have too so that we have insight on what is there. Maybe we can even extend that to our website so that our... Uh, customers know what we have in stock. So the correct answer here is all of the above. All right, our third question. What is unique about e-commerce tools? Okay, many e-commerce, uh, they might, yeah, sorry. They may use third-party integration tools. Absolutely. Uh, there are a variety of third-party integration tools for e-commerce. For example, Aloe Vera's Avatax product for calculating sales tax, or maybe UPS or FedEx for calculating costs and logistics networks. Most integrate with accounting apps. Yeah, a fair number do, not all of them, um, and it depends on the nature of the accounting system. Typically, cloud-based accounting solutions are going to be much more easily integratable than like an on-premise or traditional accounting system. Uh, integrate with accounting apps uh, can be pricey. Absolutely. That absolutely can be the nature of the game, uh, depending on what you're looking. Typically, if you're going to integrate with an accounting app, it will be a premium feature. So the correct answer here is all of the above. So that does bring us to the end of our podcast for today. We've looked at a variety of tools and components that can extend the underlying capability of our accounting solution from e-commerce, manufacturing, accounts payable, accounts receivable, document management, and more. In future episodes of the CP Today podcast in this series, we're going to dive deeper into each product and take a look at what they can do and the specific features and functions of all of them, from inventory, manufacturing, document management, and more. Uh, we're going to be looking at all the different things that you can consider to improve your overall accounting package and make it that great system for your company. Now, I do want to remind you, if you're a financial professional, you can earn credits for watching or listening to today's podcast. Again, check out cpetoday.com. Today, our course code is AA02. Again, cpetoday.com, course code AA02. You take a quick five-question quiz, 
and you will earn a credit and you'll be well on your way to maintaining that license. Fast, efficient, and easy way of getting credits uh, to stay on top of your continuing education, whether you're a CPA, an enrolled agent, or, or whatever else. Besides our podcast, we have courses in all areas of professional education from accounting, tax, personal development, computer systems and applications, and more. So please check us out for whatever your continuing education needs might be. If you enjoyed our presentation today, please know that you can connect with us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. We're always trying to put out stuff that we think is relevant and interesting, plus our podcast, everything that you need to know to stay on top of your uh, profession and to be the best professional you possibly can be. Our podcast is produced live most weeks, and you can find us on Facebook and YouTube at 11 a.m. Pacific, uh, broadcasting out to you live. But if you can't catch us live, you can also catch us on demand on uh, Spotify, uh, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and more. It is a pleasure being with you here today. Thank you so much for your time and attention, and I look forward to seeing you back in the office the next time around.